about who I just mentioned, and this is a player that you are lower on than consensus. Keegan Murray out of Iowa, who is uh, an older prospect, even though he is only a, a sophomore, um, projected to go in the top five to seven of the draft. What is your, I won't say skepticism, but why are you lower on him than, uh, I guess, the majority of people? That's a good question. So you you started by hitting on one of my main points, which is older for his class. I do value youth. If you look at the history of the draft, you'll see that the younger, the better. You look at the development trajectories. That's just an important factor. And so when you take that into account, he's going to be 22 years old when he starts his first game uh, as a rookie in the NBA. And Like we can talk about whether that matters or not, but when you look at other guys in the lottery, like a Jalen Duran, for example, almost like three and a half years younger than him, that frankly just does make a big difference. Um, In terms of like the on the court product, I do like Keegan Murray quite a bit. Uh, I have him like 11. So yes, I am lower than on him, certainly than the consensus. We'll start with the defensive side of the ball because in the playoffs, we see the value of defensively versatile wings. And frankly, at this point, I don't think that's super likely for him. I see him more as a one position defender kind of at the four in the modern NBA. So that takes a little bit of value away from him. And then on the offensive side of the ball, I think, again, you have to take into account the context. And at Iowa, they kind of always, if you watch college basketball, always have a really high powered offense mediocre defense but the way they tilt their offense is to kind of towards one star player because if you remember the year before keegan murray uh it was luca garza and that's kind of how they roll they get a they get one guy a lot of stats a lot of numbers and possessions and they feature him and so keegan murray looked great and i think he is a good player offensively but one other point i'll make is If you look at the synergy profile breakdown, it's interesting because he ended up so many possessions classified as post-ups. And so what he did was either just post up smaller players and use kind of the size advantage and strength advantage, or his drives on like size players, he's not that explosive. So he kind of just takes a while to make a move and ends up in almost a post-up in all of his drive situations. The point is that he just doesn't have great athleticism and the attacks that he make tend to take a while. I just don't think that style of attack is necessarily going to be as effective when he's not the primary focus of an NBA offense. And so I don't see any one main strength with him and I don't see the defensive versatility That combined with the fact that he's already 22 years old, to me, that's a later end of the lottery prospect as opposed to a top five guy. A couple of things with him is like the defensive numbers in terms of just blocks and steals are high. 1.9 blocks, 1.3 steals, which for fantasy is is huge. We look at those numbers, that translates really well. But are they they fake blocks and steals? Is he going to have any sort of ability to produce at that level at an NBA, uh, on an NBA team and an NBA rotation? It feels a little fake to me. It does feel a little bit fake to me as well. I just, I don't see the pop or the athleticism to be able to, be able to slide across multiple positions. So that's a point of a little bit of weakness for me. I think you'll find people that might disagree on that, but I think I'm in agreement with you both in terms of, I don't see the steals and blocks being necessarily indicative of something that's going to translate that effectively to the next level. And then I don't see the switchability on the perimeter to high level, uh, like in terms of like a playoff matchup at the next level either. The other thing with him is, and we, we talk age and people are like, yeah, but there's plenty of older players who have some success. But you know, we talk about a guy who's 22 and the end of his rookie contract, he's going to be 26. And then you, know, you give him a four-year extension, he's already past prime. Like he's 30, 31. Like yeah. that, that's done. Um, the question I have with these sort of players is, okay, if he was this good to be a top five player, why didn't he come out as a freshman? Well, he played 18 minutes a night. He took five shots a game. He averaged, what did he average here? Like seven points per game. What's the difference between his freshman season when he was still you know, 20, so he wasn't even particularly young as a freshman? 
what changed between him yeah, being a freshman and a sophomore? Was it literally the fact, well, Luca Garza was there and he couldn't beat out Luca Garza to be the best player on the team, which again gives me pause yeah. how it moves into the next level. Yeah, I think that is certainly part of it. And the funny thing is, to your point, is uh, he was one of my favorite under the radar returners. I was higher on him than consensus. But then since he's blown up to where he is now, it's funny because I was higher. Now I'm a little bit lower. So I did see a little bit of this blow up coming. But I have to admit, the numbers that he did end up putting were pretty ridiculous. But like you said, they had Luca Garza to soak up all the possessions last year. They had a very veteran laden team last year. And so he just didn't really get those reps or that opportunity. And frankly, they were already really good offensively when he was a freshman anyway. So it's not like they were going to bump the older guys down the ladder to, to suit him. So I did see some of this coming, but the offensive production was really good. But your point to me is well taken. It's one I use that, you know, if he was the level of player that we think he is, because we have to categorize him with players of his own age. So because he's dominating college basketball at age 22, well, imagine Paulo Boncaro, a similar player in the ACC, like three years from now when he's 22. Yeah. That's kind of the frame of mind that you have to look at this through. Yeah, exactly. And think about it. I, I can't think of the top of my head, but players in the NBA who are 22, like I think that's, yeah, Trey Young and what Doncic is 23, maybe like that's, yeah, it's a, it's a big, yeah. it's a big, big difference between, um, yeah, those guys who come in at 18, 19, you know, even 20 versus being 22.